This is a f the first in a series of videos on one of my favorite topics of all time, uh, geometry and relativity, or special relativity uh, as expressed from a mathematical and geometric point of view. Um, I was first introduced to this by a physicist, uh, by a physics um, textbook, um, by John Wheeler, very, very famous author on relativity, um, and, uh, for example, Feynman's uh, advisor. Um, but I really am taking it further in a mathematical direction here. So I hope it's not going to be incredibly mathematical, but it really is relativity as seen from a mathematician's standpoint. Uh, nonetheless, if you're, a if you're a student of physics studying relativity and you have even a bit of mathematical um, leaning, this might be useful because I'm probably going to present things that I think are really useful, even for just understanding relativity on its own terms. Um, that you don't usually get in a physics a physics class that's an introduction. So what we're going to start with is we're actually going to start with Euclidean geometry. Um, the, the main theme of this whole um, series is going to be that you can understand relativity by comparing it to Newtonian mechanics, but a lot of times it's actually more useful um, to unconfuse yourself by comparing it to Euclidean geometry. So it has relationships to Newtonian mechanics, but it also has relationships to Euclidean geometry, and that really informs things a lot. And I definitely get that from, uh, from Wheeler. Um, if you want to look at a book, Taylor and Wheeler's Space-Time Physics is uh, similar in spirit, but much more physical than what I'm going to talk about. So we, what we start with um, is the dot product. You, and you're going to have trouble following this if you don't have at least some familiarity with the dot product. But I'm going to reintroduce you to the dot product. And it's just going to be in the plane, R2. We're going to do almost everything in just two dimensions because that's you really get a, a good feel. So eventually we're going to have one space and one time dimension. Right now we're just in the ordinary Euclidean plane. So if I have two vectors, the dot product is defined in coordinates like this. If u is u1 comma u2, v is v1 comma v2, there's the dot product. Okay, And that's a scalar. It's not a vector, remember? Um, and even though I've defined it using coordinates, I actually want to get away from coordinates pretty quickly because it's wonderful to just look at the basic properties and see how much we can get out of the basic properties. We'll go back and forth between coordinates and, and basic properties as we go. But um, let me talk about the crucial properties that we have with this operation. Let me make some space. So one, property one, is that it's symmetric. u dot v is equal to v dot u. That's clear from the definition. Okay, And we could call that commu commutativity. But because the dot product of two vectors is not a vector, we kind of think of it, even though it has a lot of uh, analogy to an ordinary product, we don't use that word commutativity. We say it's symmetric. Okay, um, Then second property is that it respects scalar multiplication and addition the two basic vector operations that you have with vectors. So if R and S are scalars, then the sum comes out of the product, that's like a distributivity law, and the scalars come out, that's kind of like an associativity law, sort of. <laughs> um, so that's called bilinearity. It's called bilinearity because if you combine that with symmetry, you could also make this into a sum with coefficients. And so it's, so it's linear both in the left argument and the right argument. Okay, That's a, a hu super huge, or a hooper huge, super huge um, important fact. Um, now here's another fact. It's pretty clear from the definition. If you take u dot itself, you're going to get u1 squared plus u2 squared. And so that's not about an equality, it's about a greater than equal. That's greater than or equal to 0, always. And um, if u dot u equals 0, then it must be that u is the 0 vector. And this has a name. Okay, Now I can erase the definition, because we don't really need it anymore for a while. This is called positive definiteness. Or I'll just say it is positive definite, the adjective. Okay. It turns out that what we're going to do to invent relativity, the kind of geometry that models relativity, is we're going to leave these two alone 
and we're going to modify that. Okay. So let me talk about how this has anything to do with geometry. The idea here is that the dot product is the font of all geometric notions. That is a really cool modern way to think. It's not the only modern way, but it's a modern way to think about geometry. And let me just remind you, you probably, if you've seen the dot product before, you've seen some of this before. Um, one notion that comes from the dot product is the magnitude of a vector. Sometimes people use a single bar, but I use a double bar because that's more common. It's analogous to the absolute value of a number. Um, it's, it's a generalization of that. The magnitude of a vector is the square root of the dot product of a vector with itself. It's the square root of u1 squared plus u2 squared. Okay, so I'll draw a picture actually. It's geometry, I should draw a picture, right? So here's a vector u, and to get the length of that vector, I really should just figure out what this component is, what this component is, and use Pythagoras. And that's what this is. It's just Pythagoras. That's a u, not an a, by the way. Okay. Well, I want to think of that as the dot product is the way to get Pythagoras into here, essentially, and then you take the square root of the dot product of a vector with itself. Okay. Um, Hence, the notion of um, notion, well, just associated with that, notions of the length of a segment, just put an arrowhead on the segment, and the distance between two points, you just draw an arrow from one, to the two, one, one point to another, okay? And then um, a very easy concept that comes out of this is the idea of a unit vector. Um, and that's just u a vector u with magnitude equal 1. Okay, And one reason I'm reviewing all these things that come out of the dot product is that when we change to the kind of geometry that models relativity, which is called Minkowski geometry, um, we're going to have analogs of all these things. They're going to behave in a somewhat different way, but we're going to have analogs of these guys. Okay. Oh yeah, so um, actually let me, let me single out distance as its own uh, sort of numerical point. The distance between two points P and Q is just take the vector. We usually say the separation vector between those is PQ with an arrow over it, and just take the magnitude of that. So that's expressed as a, in equations, the fact that length of a segment or distance between two points is coming from this. Okay. All righty. So far, all we've done is take a, a dot product of a vector with itself. When you have two vectors, um, say u and v, you might want to know the angle between these guys. And one formula, again, that's familiar if you've seen the dot product much before, and I have videos on th about this on a more basic level if you want to watch, is that you take the dot product of two vectors and you divide by the product of their magnitudes, which again, secretly, is just the dot product. That turns out to be the cosine of theta. And uh, there's various ways to justify that. We'll see one way um, in terms of the law of cosines very soon. Okay, um, but there's actually sort of deeper ways to justify why this this is um, the right definition of the angle between two vectors. Okay, so that's going to generalize in a very interesting way toward the end of this series. Um, we won't see it. We won't see the analog of that too soon. But it's really super cool. Um, but one thing that comes up all the time is the special case of that which is orthogonality. Remember, orthogonal is just a fancy word for perpendicular. And it's if you believe that thing about the cosine, it says the two vectors are orthogonal. Well, that's going to be when the cosine is 0. And that's going to be when the dot product is equal to 0. OK. So that says that dot product of two vectors equaling 0 is the definition of orthogonality. And that's going to be true in our uh, modified version of geometry as well. Okay, So I know I'm going through this quickly, but this is really uh, intended to be reviewed. Okay, So let me talk about the law of cosines. That's a wonderful uh, demonstration of the, the neat power of the dot product as a foundation of geometry. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a triangle, and we're going to realize that when we have vectors and we want to draw a triangle, a very reasonable thing to do is draw them coming out the same tail, 
And then remember that if you join the tips of two vectors that share a tail, that's this one, v, minus this one, u. And if you don't remember that, you can do the tip to tail version of summing. u plus v minus u, the u should cancel, you should get v. Oh yeah, there's v. Okay. Well, now that tells us that maybe we should think about how um, the dot product interacts with the minus here. And we could, in particular, find out how the length of this guy is measured by the dot product. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the magnitude squared, because that doesn't have that annoying square root in it, of u minus v. That's this guy. So that's just the length of that side of the triangle. We're going to take an, a geometric notion, magnitude, and express it in terms of algebra. by remembering that the magnitude square is just the dot product of a vector with itself. And then the great thing is that algebra expressed in the dot product interacts well with algebra expressed in the subtraction. I just FOIL this out. The distributive law, the bilinearity used twice, gives me u dot u minus 2u dot v by, sim by symmetry plus v dot v. OK, u dot u, that's back to a geometric notion. That's the magnitude squared. And that's a magnitude squared. And what's left over is the dot product of uh, u and v. OK. So <coughs> what this says is that the, th the magnitude, the length squared of the third side of any triangle is the sum of the other two squares of the other two sides minus 2 times something. Well, that is exactly the law of cosines. u dot v, remember that u dot v divided by the product of the magnitudes was cosine theta. So I can rewrite this as product of the magnitudes, cosine theta. Now there's two ways to, to take this. One is, um, if I already, actually maybe three ways. If I believe that u dot v is equal to this in terms of cosine theta, then I've proved the law of cosines. If I already know the law of cosines, I can use that as the justification I was alluding to for why you would say that cosine theta is u dot v divided by the product of the magnitudes. Okay, So that you, either way, depending on which thing you believe first, you can prove the other one. There's even another way uh, to think about it where we see another reason why theta would come in. And we don't have to assume either of those facts. But that's, uh, that comes later. So in any case, the reason the law of cosine has cosines has the form that it does is really because it's foiling. If you ever notice with law of cosines, it's square plus square minus 2 times what kind of looks like a middle term of a foiling out of, of, a, of a, uh, a square of a binomial. Well, it is. It is the square of a binomial. Um, and that's where that sort of 2 of the cross term comes in. Okay. So in particular, suppose these guys were orthogonal. If, the, if this was actually a right angle, which it doesn't look like it, oh, imagine it's in perspective, and then it could look like a right angle. Then this is going to go away, and you get good old Pythagoras. The, the square of the hypotenuse is the sum of the squares of these guys. OK. Um, and let me, um, let me actually do this. Let me just put it in here where the picture is. Suppose you didn't take this out, actually right out of here. Very important fact is that even though I define the dot product to be the source of all good things, um, you really can recover all the information of the dot product from magnitudes if you know how to add and subtract vectors. I'm just going to isolate this guy. u dot v. I know I cross it out here, so let, let me just write it in. Okay. That's u dot v. Um, I'm just going to put it on the other side and just divide by minus 2. And what I get is 1 half of magnitude of u minus v squared. Um, let's see. Oh, no. Let's see. Let me put it down here. 1 half. Give me some, my, myself more room. Sorry. Magnitude of u squared plus magnitude of v squared minus magnitude of u minus v squared. And there's a version of that also with a plus here, which is easy to figure out what the version of this would be with a plus. And you see that more often. This is called polarization. And it's just kind of a weird word for the fact that as long as I know how to take the lengths of stuff, 
then I can basically use a kind of a law of cosines argument to figure out the, the dot product of any two vectors. Um, and that's, that's really, really useful. Okay, let me um, continue in this vein just a little bit more with some other cool stuff about the dot product. Let me go down in my cheat sheet here. Yeah, okay. Um, for example, suppose I look at the sum of two vectors in the magnitude squared and add that to the difference of two vectors magnitude squared, okay? This is really u plus v dot itself. If I FOIL that out, and then this is the difference, and that just turns into a minus sign. These cancel, and I get a really cool fact. It's called the parallelogram law is just 2 times the magnitude squared of u plus 2 times the magnitude squared of v. And what that says is when I've got two vectors u and v, I can take the difference of the two that connects their tail, their, their tips, or I could shift v or shift u and take the sum. And so here is u minus v. Actually, that's v minus u. Okay, so I'll put the, I'll put the head that way. That's u minus v. That's u plus v. So this says the sum of the squares of the diagonals of a parallelogram is equal to the sum of the squares of the four sides. Because 2 magnitude u squared, that's these two sides. And 2 magnitude v squared is the sum of these guys. That's a classical geom geometry uh, fact that just comes out in an incredibly simple way. There's nothing about cosines. Nothing, I mean, it's just two things canceling. It's foiling and canceling. Um, and it's very cool that we get that fact, okay? What if um, we actually, what if we did something slightly different? What if we subtracted these guys? So that was the parallelogram law. Let me write that down. Parallelogram law. It has some really deep significance. We'll see it come back in a little ways later, but okay. Um, what if we subtracted this guy? then this is going to subtract, this is going to subtract, that's going to add, they're not going to cancel at all, these are going to go, and I get yet another version of, of polarization, which is that u dot v is one-fourth of the magnitude of the sum squared minus the magnitude of the difference squared. I'm not sure if we're going to end up using that, but it's really too cool not to sort of cherry pick that formula. Okay, so that's pretty much all I want to say about Euclidean geometry as coming from the dot product. And now, in the next video, we're going to modify that just by changing one sign and get a very interesting kind of geometry that turns out to model where we really live, which is uh, space-time, Minkowski space-time or special relativity.